our week of prayer. Um, I would like to invite everyone to meditate as I will share um, the video of our theme song. Sorry about that. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for that grace. That grace that is greater than all our sins that even that sin threatened our soul for infinite loss. It points us toward that cross where your son Jesus Christ shed his blood for us so that we may have eternal life. We thank you, dear Jesus, for what you have done for us. We ask that the Holy Spirit will be with us tonight as we study your words. In the loving name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Tonight, I will be sharing about God's grace through interceding prayers. 
A verse for consideration is found in the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14. I will be reading from New King James Version. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. This Bible verse is a response to Solomon's prayer in chapter 6. Solomon prayed for the people of Israel for mercy and forgiveness in times when they sin. If you have your Bibles with you, you can open it in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 22. Um, I'm just going to summarize the prayer because it's very long. But um, Solomon prayed in verse 22 to 23. He prayed for those who sinned against their neighbors to bring judgment to the wicked and justify the righteous. In our present time, who are our neighbors? Solomon is talking about relationship here. And our neighbors could be our families, co-workers, close friends, husband, wife, children, or our literal neighbors. Sometimes we have broken relationships that we suffer emotionally. And we can bring it to God in prayers. Second, Solomon prayed for the people of Israel who are defeated in battle because of their sins. He prayed that if they confess and pray and make supplications, that God will forgive and bring them back to the land which he gave them. He is praying for restorations. We are in a spiritual battles every day, and sometimes we are defeated by sins. But we can pray for each other. Confess our sins to God and ask for forgiveness. And that God will restore us back to his presence. Third, Solomon prayed for when there is no rain because of sin. People of Israel experienced drought and famine because of sins. If you remember before, prophet Elijah told King Ahab that there will be no rain for three years. It's because people worship Baal and other gods. In our lives, we may experience drought in any aspects. When we feel we don't receive any rain, and there are people also who are struggling, and we can bring it to God, we can pray for it, that God will teach us the way, the good way to live. For Solomon, Prayed for calamities, disasters, famine, pestilence, plagues, sickness, and whatever prayers, supplication, griefs, and burdens that God will forgive and give to everyone according to all his ways. Fifth, he prayed for the foreigners who have come because of his great name and prayed in the temple that they may know and fear God. We can also pray not only for church members, not only for our families, but we can pray for our visitors who have come to know God. Those who are in Bible studies, our quadrants. Six, he also prayed for the people of Israel who are going out for a battle against their enemies to hear their supplications and sustain their cause. In our everyday battle, we can pray for each other for strength to overcome temptations and sin. And lastly, he prayed for those who sin and taken captives because they have sinned against God. We may be captives of our wrongdoings and we are captives of our sins, but when we call for him and ask for forgiveness and return to God with all our heart, then we can ask God to hear our prayers and he will forgive us.
If you notice, Solomon did not pray for his own welfare or for the welfare of the kingdom. He prayed for the people because he knows that people will fall into sin. And he knew that God disciplined his people, which brings terrible things to happen. After Solomon prayed, the fire came down from heaven and consumed all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. And the glory of God filled the temple. And all the people bowed down their faces to the ground and worshipped him. And then one night, God appears to Solomon, telling him that he hears his prayer. God responds to Solomon's prayer with four conditions. In, in our verse for tonight, it says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. So God said first, humble yourselves. You can humble yourselves by acknowledging that you have sinned and you confess it to God and you repent it. James 4.10 says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Second, God said, pray. Commune with him, talk to him. Ask for forgiveness. Apostle Paul advised us in 1 Thessalonians 5.17 to pray without ceasing. Third, God said, seek my face. Means to search for him devotedly or we have to look for him earnestly. As the song says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things on earth will grow dim and the light of his glory and grace. Jeremiah 29, verse 13 says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Fourth, the Lord asks us to turn from our wicked ways. It means we have to change the direction of our hearts to turn toward Jesus. And Proverbs 28, 13 says, whoever conceals his transgression will not prosper, but who confesses and forsakes them finds mercy. True repentance will always be recognized by the change in our hearts and it will be seen in our actions and behaviors. God's promise that if we walk in his way, he said, I will hear from heaven when we pray. God hears us from heaven. Matthew 21, verse 22 says, And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 24, Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. Brothers and sisters, when we pray, God is listening. Second, God said, I will forgive their sins. First John 1 John 1.9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. And God said, I will heal their land. God sent healing to their lands. Remember when Prophet Elijah prayed to God, only did the rain come after three years of drought and famine. When people realize their wrongdoings and come to repentance and worship God. Now we see the result of Solomon's prayer. God is gracious. He listens and answers our prayers when we pray for others. There is something or effect that when we intercede for others, they will receive grace. It's just like in our family, when our child asked something from his dad, and if he did something wrong, dad will say, no, you can't have it because you did this. But if someone will intercede, example, a brother, 
or a sister or mom will say, okay, let him have it for maybe just an hour. Our dad or a father will sometimes say, okay, you can have this, but you have to do this. So it's the same thing with our heavenly father. His words doesn't change. It's always his word and it changes us. It's us who made the changes. It's not God because God is there, but he gives us the chance. I want to share some of the intercessory story in the Bible that will help us understand more. In Exodus chapter 32, Moses intercedes with the people of Israel. Remember when the people worship the golden calf. God said, I have seen how stubborn and hard he did this people, that he was very angry and he wants to wipe them, them out of the earth. But Moses tried to pacify the Lord. And the Lord relent his anger. Moses asked those who are on the Lord's side to come and join him. So God did not kill all the people because those who come and join Moses who believed in God was spared. But those who disobeyed was killed. There were 3,000 people killed at that died at that time. At that time, Moses even asked God to erase his name to wherever it was recorded. But God is a fair God. He told him that he will only erase the name, those who have sinned against him. How gracious is our God. He could have done what he wanted to do for rebellious people, but he gave grace to those who wants to obey him. He only desires that all will come in repentance and walk in his ways. Jesus Christ paid the price already at the cross. He can punish us when we sin against him, but he is a loving and merciful God, gracious and forgiving. He wants us to come to him so we can, he can help us. Another story is Abraham intercedes for Sodom. Abraham asked God, if there were 50 righteous people, will you destroy the city? God said, for the sake of 50, I will not destroy the city. But if there are 40, 30, 20, I will not destroy it for the sake of 20. Suppose there are 10 righteous people. For the sake of 10, I will not destroy the city. How gracious is our God. He could have burned the city, including Lot and his family, but he is a loving, merciful, and gracious to those who believe in him. He spared them. Jesus is the great intercessor. Jesus also intercedes for us. In John chapter 17, Jesus is praying for his disciples and to all believers. One of the intercessory prayer of Jesus that really touched my heart is when he prayed for Simon Peter. In Luke chapter 22, verse 32, Jesus told Simon Peter, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith will not fail. But Simon had a pride also in his heart. He said, Lord, I'm ready to go with you into prison and even to death. Jesus told him, Peter, before the roster crowds today, you will deny me three times. And Peter did deny Jesus. Jesus looked straight into Peter's eye and Peter remembered what Jesus had told him and he cried bitterly. In spite of Jesus' prayer, Peter's faith failed. Why? Peter has a choice. Jesus warned him already. He knows him well. Peter could have availed the power of prayer if he too humbled himself and prayed, submitting himself to God, placing his full trust in Jesus, but he thought he can handle it by himself. 
Peter cried bitterly and repented of his pride and self-sufficiency, and he was forgiven. What a gracious and loving God. Even when no others pray for us, we need to humble ourselves, submit to God, for our faith is weak. We can only claim the promise if we humbly pray and seek God first, then true change in our hearts will reflect in our actions. Even at the cross, Jesus intercedes with his enemy. Luke chapter 23, verse 34. He said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. What a love for humanity. No one can fathom, much less grace. He only wants that all will come into repentance. How gracious is he. Jesus is still interceding for us in heaven. In Romans chapter 8, verse 34, says, Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore is also reason, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. He is still working for us. Let us remember that every blessings we receive, every petition or request granted, it is because of our Lord Jesus Christ who intercedes for us. Jesus urged us to intercede also for others. In Hebrews 4, 16, and in Matthew 18, verse 19, he said, Again, truly, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Therefore, let us approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may find mercy and grace to help us in our time of needs. May we feel God's grace as we humbly come before him in prayer, as we earnestly seek his face and tune our heart to him as the Holy Spirit works in our lives. Amen.